Hello and welcome to Fresh Perspectives. My name is Gail and um, my guest today is a lady who has been on a couple of other times before so you might remember her. Her name is Colleen Vanderseiden and she's a multi-talented person. She's with the Erie Philharmonic Orchestra. She plays violin. She does healing with tuning forks. Um, she used to teach music, was it? Um, she is a medium and uh, a life coach, uh, a spiritual life coach. Did I cover everything? I think you did. Oh, good. Lots of good. radio shows, too. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, you have radio shows. So, anyway, Colleen is here today, and we are going to talk about creative solutions to solving problems. Okay, Colleen, um, I'm going to kind of let you uh, start out here. Um, sure. It was, always, it was interesting when we were talking about what to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> it was, wasn't You know, it? Yeah. because we're like, what should we talk about this time? And mm -hmm. you know, I've been working a lot with people on strategies to solve their problems, mm -hmm. how they can uh, look at perspectives from a different way, to shift those kinds of things. And this all started back in 2000 for mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. because I had an awakening at that time. I don't know if I ever told you about that awakening. Did I ever tell you how I just kind of woke up one day <laughs> and realized my life was not what I wanted it to be? Uh, I don't know. I, okay. I remember you telling me something about a barn falling down. Yes, <laughs> the barn falling down. <laughs> I'll, I'll do a very brief version of it. Basically, I was doing automatic writing, which is when you just write whatever comes through. Right. And part of the message was be who you are for who you are is blessed. And I didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. I recognized I didn't know who I was. So I started on this journey of self-discovery and realized the way I was living my life was not the way I wanted to be living mm -hmm. my life. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to live it that way for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. along my path of finding myself, I realized my stress level had decreased. I had accidentally developed these strategies that I could use to handle any problems that popped mm -hmm. up. And so since I realized that, it took a few years before I realized what I was doing. Now I teach those strategies and I'm out there helping people with their problems now. It's a very interesting uh, process and a way of living to recognize mm -hmm. you actually have the power mm -hmm. to change how you're feeling about your mm -hmm. problems. Do you ever get arguments from people about what you're trying to teach them? Oh yes. <laughs> it's so funny because if you have a problem, our automatic reaction, everybody does this, it's normal, it's habitual, we blame how we feel on the problem. Mm -hmm. Which, yes, if it's a big problem, you have to feel the emotions and all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there does come a time where you can take control of how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Or we mm -hmm. might react habitually to something that's so small. So I, when I tell people they can feel better, they can change how they're looking at their problems, they go, no, I can't because this is still here. That <laughs> still is happening. And I'm going, yeah, but that's the way life is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I remember, um, I, I remember when I was taking care of my mother, it, it was kind of, it went on for four years and it was kind of a stressful situation. And I remember some of her therapists and various people were trying to talk me into um, getting some psychological counseling or um, go to support group meetings and stuff. And I, I, I would tell them, um, I don't see how I could possibly find time to, you know, go for any appointments like that, you know, because this is keeping me so busy. You know, they thought it would help me handle the stress. However, it probably just would have increased it, you know, by trying to fit in time for those other things. Yeah, so, it is a matter of self-care. Yeah, too. yeah. You can't, uh, you're only one person and you can't... Uh, do everything. Yeah, and if you don't take some time for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, I've had a couple of clients who've come in um, with that very scenario, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they don't recognize, you know, you're so busy sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. we're just going from one thing to the next, we're not mm -hmm. thinking, mm -hmm. you know, we don't take time to just breathe, mm -hmm. and so I always tell people just to do a one minute meditation, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, just one minute of breathing, and that can, boy, take you mm -hmm. down so mm -hmm. quickly, because mm -hmm. We get going in our heads. I call it crazy brain. <laughs> we yeah, get going yeah, in our heads. Really, really, yeah. Um, I remember uh, studying metaphysics when I was a lot younger, and I remember uh, I remember the teacher telling us uh, 
you know, not to worry and complain about things, because if you do, you direct the creative energy of the universe. Uh, you're basically telling it the creative uh, energy of the universe to give you more of the same, because you're focusing yeah. on it, so you're creating it. Yeah, it's the so, law of attraction, what you focus on. Mm -hmm. I just did a show, a radio show, on the magic of our words mm -hmm. and how the words we use create our reality. Mm -hmm. So many things do, but that's mm -hmm. part of it. And when we get going with those, that worry and stuff, it's kind of like we get sucked into this downward spiral of negative emotions and we end up getting attached to the emotions. Yeah, you know? yeah. And the more we yeah. complain, about things, what's happening, the worse it becomes. And right, right. where you might have felt, you know, only this bad before, and now you end up feeling this bad mm -hmm. as you get going. Well, I've had people tell me that it helps them to talk at a support group. Um, and some of these people, you know, uh, they say it helps them, but it doesn't really because the more they talk about it, the more they talk, the more they complain about it. it. It's kind of like it just keeps going on and on and on. They, what they really seem to be wanting is people to just listen to them <laughs> complain, but people don't like to listen to other people, to each other complain. Yeah. They don't want to hear it. You'd have mm -hmm. to have a good support group where the leader is somebody who recognizes the value of the venting, mm -hmm. but then moves on to something like co cognitive behavioral therapy or something with, an, or coaching even, mm -hmm. where you have an action step. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are you going to do differently this week? Try this, try mm -hmm. that. Um, because if you don't take control mm -hmm. and be responsible for how you're feeling, you will get sucked down there. Yeah, you know? yeah. And um, this metaphysics teacher uh, would tell us, um, not to listen to other people complain about their problems either because uh, you'll get sucked into their drama, you know, if, if you listen to them complain. So, and he always said uh, to be careful about who you hang around with. <laughs> that is true. You know, um, so. I had a student who, um, uh, when I was teaching still in school, uh, she was so negative. Mm -hmm. Everything she said was negative, complaining, whining, everything, everything, on and on. And finally one day I said to her, you know, you're pretty negative. Do you ever listen to the words that come out of your mouth? And she's, she's like, what do you mean? And I said, well, I just want you to spend the rest of the day just listening to, to what? what you're saying. Yeah. Just pay attention yeah. because without the awareness you can't change anything, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. And she came back to me about an hour later and she says, I'm not doing this anymore. I said, what do you mean? She goes, it's too hard. <laughs> so what, what was too hard? Watching her, watching words, her words. Because she yeah. started to see how her mind automatically went to the negative and to and it, it was too hard for her to look at that because then she felt helpless about changing it. Oh. And I said, you know what? It's just a matter of being aware. So mm -hmm. If you can notice how your mind is thinking, what you're saying, what comes out of your mouth before you've even thought mm -hmm. about anything, if you can just notice it and detach from it, just go, oh, yeah, but there's that mean voice coming out again. I, I'm not going to say it. Mm -hmm. And if you just choose not to say it, you can start to shift the energy. But mm -hmm. the first step is always awareness. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it can be difficult for people who tend to be negative because mm -hmm. then they judge themselves. Oh. And then they beat themselves up. Oh, I'm so horrible at this. I can't, I can't do it. I can't be nice. I, I can't be optimistic. I can't, I can't, I can't. And mm -hmm. all of those words, again, are creating this horrible negative feeling inside yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, this metaphysics teacher uh, taught us a little trick that we could do. Um, he said that when your mind starts worrying or uh, having uh, thoughts of anger or uh, whatever uh, to watch your mind mm -hmm. and uh, he said that when you do this your mind will get embarrassed and quit doing it for a while and then you know when you're not paying attention it'll sneak back in there and start doing it again um, and so then you have to direct yourself to watch it again so that it stops doing it again and just keep doing that over and over and it was pretty miraculous the results of doing things that way because I remember there were certain situations that 
when I did that particular exercise uh, with, then the problems just sort of seemed to solve themselves without me doing much of anything about it. And uh, it, it really just seems so miraculous. Yeah, it, you know, it is. And it's, the interesting part is it's so simple mm -hmm. to change things, mm -hmm. but we find it difficult because it does involve that awareness. It mm -hmm. does evolve, involve that commitment mm -hmm. to making different choices. Our mind is powerful. Mm -hmm. Our mm -hmm. mind, if we are not aware of our mind, our mind can create all sorts of problems oh, and yes. make our oh, physical, yeah. external problems worse. Yes, yes. So the first step is always that awareness. And if you can, I know Wayne Dyer said something about uh, thinking of your thoughts as being on a conveyor belt. Oh. So you just watch a thought go by and you go, oh yeah, there it goes again. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then the next one comes in because they just pop in mm -hmm. out of the blue. But if you're aware, that is that is absolutely the first step. Mm -hmm. And just that awareness, like you said, can change your whole life. Mm -hmm. Just one simple change. Right. Some people, uh, with the meditation you were just mentioning, some uh, teachers tell you to kind of just watch it like clouds floating, mm -hmm. floating by, notice it and let it go. Yes. So. And it is the letting go because we do tend to hold on to things and we too tend to hold on to negative emotions. People who are complainers, they, they love that. That's mm -hmm. what they want. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like an addiction, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> it is, you have no control. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So um, what are some of, uh, some of the things that uh, you've helped people um, do yeah, it's, with their problems? You know, the, the first thing I like to do is that awareness, mm -hmm. just to, to bring their attention to their awareness. Mm -hmm. Have them become aware of their awareness. Um, yeah. it, people don't realize they have that power within themselves to change how they're feeling. They just right. don't realize it. And that's m basically really my big message mm -hmm. is to recognize you have that power. We all have it, and I call it a hidden inner magic. We have this hidden inner magic within ourselves to change right. how we're living. Right. We actually, and I heard this last year, I was watching some video and it was some Swami or something talking, and he talked about how we experience our lives in our heads. Mm -hmm. And I thought, whoa, wait a minute. And which of course then takes us back to the people who say, well, I have this problem and I feel badly because they said this to me or this happened to me or whatever it is. But really, we, everybody has problems. We all have challenges. Mm -hmm. We all have issues. We mm -hmm. all have concerns. They're going to keep coming. We can't mm -hmm. stop them. The only thing we can do is take responsibility for how we respond to them. Mm -hmm. And so that takes us back to that inner game in our heads of how we respond and react and what we believe to be true mm -hmm. in our lives. So if we can harness the mind and do different mind games, then we can, even with your problems, you can change things. Now, I found out in February, I think it was, that my identity had been stolen. Really? Yes. Oh. Now, I did not obviously know this. <laughs> so, and I was getting ready to buy a car. Oh. And so I applied for a loan at the credit union, as I always do. Uh -huh. And then they, when I went in, they said, oh, um, you know, we're going to have to charge you a higher interest rate. And I said, why? Mm -hmm. Well, because your credit score is so low. I said, what? what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. So when I looked at the score and that was not my credit score and I'm going, what do you mean? I, like, what is this? So then they gave me a copy of the credit report and I saw there was a charge on there that obviously I had not done, which explained all the phone calls I had gotten in September, October, November, uh, all those, five, six all, months before. All those months? Uh -huh. So apparently somebody had stolen my identity in August of 2017. And I didn't find out until February of 2018. Oh my gosh. So people kept calling me and saying they were calling about my Amazon credit card. And I said, I don't have an Amazon credit card. Thank you and hanging up. I'm figuring they're just fishing. It's a scam call or whatever. The last call was, I said to them, look, if I really had one, you would know information about me. <laughs> so then they started to tell me stuff like my address, my telephone number, my social security number, all this stuff. And I'm going, Okay, and I just hung up. I had no idea what to do, right? So when I find out in February, now I'm going, oh. So so how did you finally find it, out? It was when I applied to get the car oh, loan. The, that's right. The car. So I said to the girl at the credit union, what do I do about this? So she told me some stuff. It wasn't accurate. So, of course, I Googled it and got what I needed to do. Yeah. So now, um, because I've been on this path for a long time of handling mm -hmm. problems and helping people with their problems, I knew that if I stepped into the negative emotions, mm -hmm. I was going, I could end up having days and days of sleepless nights. Mm -hmm. I could mm -hmm. have stepped into the emotion of, uh, what if I have to pay this back? 
I don't Ooh. want to. I don't want to pay thousands of dollars back. And a friend of mine said, "Well, it's just a few thousand to get your name." I said, "I'm not paying that back. It's not. It's not my debt. I'm not doing it." Mm -hmm. I could have stepped into that. I could have stepped into the victim energy of why did somebody do this to me? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I could have stepped into uh, the helpless mode. I, you know, I don't know what to do. I don't. What if it never gets fixed? You know, the mind could have taken me there, but I consciously chose not to do that. Yeah. So I consciously chose not to do it and just stayed in the present. Mm -hmm. What I had to do in the present was solve the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't need the emotional aspects getting mm -hmm. in my way because mm -hmm. you know when we get emotional about something, that clouds our vision, it clouds our practicality, we don't know what to do, we don't know how to solve things. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of plugged away, I did a little bit every day and stayed out of it. So if somebody has a big problem like that, I will frequently tell them just to stay in the present. Mm -hmm. In that moment, and one of my favorite phrases is, in this moment everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it takes us right back to here and you could have all sorts of stuff happening on, around you, you know, you're, you're horrible, horrible things. But if you step right back into this very moment, there's nothing wrong in this moment. Mm -hmm. You know, so I tell people to do that all the time. And so that's what I ended up doing. Mm -hmm. It took a few months to get it fixed. Mm -hmm. um, but I, eventually I never, I didn't have to pay any money and it was fixed. And now I have all my credit um, bureaus, whatever they're called, I have them all frozen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so no one can open anything mm -hmm. up. And, mm -hmm. and I do recommend that people get their free credit reports every year because mm -hmm. I kept saying, I need to do that, I need to do that. I kept getting the intuitive message and I wasn't doing it and I thought, well, I'm applying for a car loan, I'm sure they'll let me know, I didn't think there was a problem. Should have listened to my own intuition and gone and done it a little sooner. So how did, uh, did you find out how the person uh, I did. Oh, uh, how did they, what did they do? <laughs> it was the Equifax credit breach that happened a couple years ago. Oh. That's how they got it. The part that was interesting is they had an address of two houses ago that I lived in. So they were using the wrong address. Oh. But it was one of my addresses, so and because everything wasn't quite exactly correct in the credit bureaus, mm -hmm. they kind of accepted it. So they were sending all the mail to that old address, and of course, by, you know, years later, it just got sent back, mm -hmm. you know? So, and, and, and actually that person who did it, her name was on stuff. She had bought stuff through Amazon, and they had her name and everything. So I don't know if they ever followed on up. On stuff? Yeah, so like things that were mailed to her. That she had her actual email address and she had a mailing address and everything. So I don't know if they caught her, but oh. yeah, it's interesting. So, you know, we have so many problems that can pop up. Some mm -hmm. are little, some mm -hmm. are big. Mm -hmm. Well, apparently somebody believed you uh, in order to get this straightened out. That um, You yeah. hadn't been doing all these things that supposedly you had been spending money on or whatever. And, you know, I've never been late on a bill, mm -hmm. ever in my mm -hmm. life, <laughs> so it didn't make sense. And I was surprised at how much my credit score changed mm -hmm. because of this one debt. I, it, was, it was hundreds of points. <laughs> oh, gosh, gosh. Um, yeah. Uh, um, so do they give you a new uh, social security number? No, no, I didn't need that or anything. No? You know, you don't need that. No. It's just a matter of, cleaning it up and then doing what you have to do to protect it after that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes too, I, I was in Outer Banks last year with a friend of mine and as we were on the beach mm -hmm. and they had all these riptide warning signs. And when there's a riptide, mm -hmm. you get sucked out into the water mm -hmm. in the tide and what you're supposed to do is not resist it, not resist the mm -hmm. water. You're supposed to float out until mm -hmm. the current lessens and then you can swim back. Mm -hmm. And as I was there, I was thinking, this is a lot like life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I call it the riptide survival plan. <laughs> the riptide survival when plan. When something happens that's big, that's huge, that comes in and just sweeps you away and you're like literally taken out to sea and you're just floating. You're going with the flow, you have to float to survive basically. So mm -hmm. whenever, so I use that when somebody's having a really big problem. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have like somebody very ill, you know, um, in your life, somebody's very ill, you're having to take care of them, or you're, you know, you're there and you're just watching it. You can't do anything about it. You know, you can't change the situation as so many of our problems. It's very rare that we can change much of it. You know, we can change a little bit, but not everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I always tell people to recognize that that's what's happening and it's okay to float. Mm -hmm. It's okay to survive. Mm -hmm. You don't have mm -hmm. to take action. And mm -hmm. part of our problem 
whenever we have a problem, <laughs> bad sentence, is when we resist it, mm -hmm. we resist the problem. Yeah. So if we get swept out in the ocean and we're trying really hard to get back and we're swimming against the current and we're doing all, all these things, we're going to drown. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to drown. And mm -hmm. it's the same thing with life. Mm -hmm. If some big problem comes and we're mm -hmm. resisting it mm -hmm. rather than accepting it, we're, we're going to have more problems. So it's very hard though, you know, talking about people arguing with me, if somebody in your family is very ill or yourself, you're very mm -hmm. ill. And I'm saying to them, well, you have to accept it. And they're going, no, I'm not going to accept it. I'm going to fight it. I'm going to fight it. I was like, yes, you can fight it. You can do what you can. But by fighting it, you're not accepting it and moving into the energy of being able to handle it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you were working with your, your mother and she was sick, did you move into that phase where you just kind of had to go, okay, this is the way it is? Eventually. It takes a while, doesn't <laughs> you know, it? You it, know, it takes a while to uh, get used to it. She, like out of the blue, had a stroke, you know, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden uh, my entire life, the, the lives of the entire immediate family changed, you know. Right. Every, all of a sudden everything was different. Yeah, and it's, it's a big thing. And I think sometimes people don't recognize it's okay to panic. <laughs> it's okay to panic. It's okay to be sad. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay to, because you have to grieve the loss of what was. Mm -hmm. And as a medium, um, I've had people, I'll say things, you know, along the lines of, well, you know, everybody's going to die and all of that. And people are very resistant to that too. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it is, again, back to that sense of acceptance. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't mean you're going, oh, this is great. I'm so glad this happened. No, <laughs> it just means you have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So accepting is being able to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, uh, like nowadays, I get a lot of uh, people paying attention to the news. And you know how the news is. <laughs> they tend to focus on the negative things that are going on in the world. and. So then you get all these people that are complaining about the things they're hearing about on the news. So um, I'm thinking, oh, you know, uh, they're probably they're probably directing the creative energy of the universe, uh, you know, to keep this going. You know. Oh yeah. Um, well, we're in a big, and I don't know if we talked about this last time, but we're in a big consciousness shift now. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have such extremes mm -hmm. in behaviors. Mm -hmm. And the people who are more positive and optimistic are kind of counterbalancing the other people. And um. eventually what we hope is going to happen <laughs> is the more negative people start to recognize that their energy is affecting what's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. it's, it is, I mean, when we get sucked into that negative stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> it is hard to get out, isn't it? It is, it is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like people, you know, some people just cannot make themselves, I'm finding it hard to put it into the right words, like some people just find it really hard to make themselves be nice <laughs> you know, <laughs> to other people. Um, <clears throat> now, I've always uh, been one that w didn't think we should have wars, you know. And, um, I, and I don't know that it really helps, you know. It's, uh, you're going off to war and you're killing a bunch of You've got your soldiers that are killing off a bunch of people, and a bunch of them are getting killed off by the other people, and mm -hmm. and yeah. you know, and I I don't know that it really does that much good. Yeah, it's it's not a high yeah. level of thinking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not yeah, a high really. level of thinking. When I think of you know all of the buildings that have been bombed over the over the years, you know all that rubble and and everything that has to be cleaned up afterwards, and it just seems like a like an awful waste of human life. And yeah, and and sometimes I wonder if people have learned the lessons. You know, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like with our problems too. Do we learn the lessons from mm -hmm. our problems? Mm -hmm. 
you know, people get sucked in again. And then if I tell people sometimes to do a little life review, if your mm -hmm. problems are so bad, look back when you had another time where it was so bad. And what did you learn? What did you experience? How did you grow as a person? Because really everything comes down to who we are as a person, mm -hmm. who we truly are. Mm -hmm. And as a nation, who are we as mm -hmm. a nation mm -hmm. um, to, to establish a war or participate in a war. Mm -hmm. you know, who, what is our identity? Mm -hmm. And we can do it on the individual level and we can do it on the collective consciousness as well. Mm -hmm. But each one of us contributes to that collective mm -hmm. consciousness. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a struggle sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah. And you know, talking about problems too and how people handle things, I always tell people to practice with the smaller problems. Mm -hmm. Right. Some right. strategies, so when the bigger problems come, it's not as um, hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. You know, it's just not as hard. Yeah, yeah. You know? So. I was driving down, when I was going to North Carolina with my friend, we were driving there and I ran over something in the road and got a flat tire someplace in Virginia. Oh, something that cut, punctured the yeah. tire. Yeah, and I saw something in the road, but it was in five lanes of traffic and I didn't have time to move and mm -hmm. whatever. I hit it and <laughs> mm -hmm. there you go. So, you know, I finally, we made it to a gas station kind of thing and it was one of those times where before, if I hadn't been on my spiritual path and my problem solving path, uh, I would have been all stressed out and worried. Oh, now we're going to be late. What do you know? Are we going to be able to find a tire? Are we going to be able to this? Are we going to be able to that? You, you know how when we get stressed out, we go into the, that little mind game that's not so pleasant. Mm -hmm. And um, both my friend Jen and I, we both just went, okay, um, take care of this for me, would you? And I went into the store and I said to the person, do you, do you know what we should do? We have a flat tire out here. He goes, call this person and he hands me a piece of paper that says call a mirror and he gives me this number so we call this random man mm -hmm. in virginia who comes and um jacks up the car looks at the, the thing tries to fix it doesn't work and says well follow me and so now jen and i are looking at each other are we going to follow this guy that we don't know in virginia mm -hmm. to see if he's going to help us <laughs> but okay follow me uh he didn't expect you to drive in well, the car he, with a flat he tire. He put enough he? air in it. Oh. He thought we could make it. Oh. I know, because I'm going, and I'm thinking, well, I can't drive that fast because I don't want to ruin the rim or whatever you call it. Um, so we both look at each other and we go, okay, so it was a matter of that, you know, that problem where I would have flipped out before mm -hmm. and been all nervous and mm -hmm. should I go? So we just thought we're going to just trust the situation and mm -hmm. see what happens. Mm -hmm. And so we followed him to this service center or whatever it was and no one was speaking English and, and we were a little bit nervous mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. don't know you know we're two ladies you know we're heading someplace and they're gonna charge me you know a thousand dollars for a tire he charged me like a hundred dollars mm -hmm. it was so sweet I mean he was so nice mm -hmm. and it was kind of an adventure for us mm -hmm. so being able to shift our perspectives from stress worry and all that and move into we're just gonna trust that it's going to work out and so many times when people have a problem they don't trust that mm -hmm. this is the way it's supposed to be mm -hmm. and this is it's going to work it'll be okay mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah those life reviews are good um thinking back on uh, over the years you know uh to when i was a lot younger and making various different mistakes and things <laughs> Even mistakes in middle age. You know. Yesterday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, thinking back, um, and you know, these ideas just don't pop into your head, you know, uh, when you're getting ready to make a decision, but uh, you make a wrong decision, so you cause yourself to have a problem. And um, years later, I, I'll have a thought, well, if I had just done this instead of what I did do, I wouldn't have had the problem to begin with, you know. So I, I think that a big part of um, dealing with problems is uh, to look at things very carefully before you make your decisions and, um, and hopefully make the right one, you right. know. And uh, years later, I mean, I can say, well, I wouldn't have had this problem if I had just done this instead, if I had just said no to that person about something or, or whatever, you know, I could have saved myself not having problems. Well, and you learned. Yeah. From everything yes. that happened, you learned. Yeah. And you make, you know, we all make our best decisions based on 
where we are today. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, looking back, as long as we learn from it, and uh, we don't beat ourselves up over it, you know, then we've done the right thing because mm -hmm. the next time we become more informed. I always joked I wanted to write a book that I could find the next time I come back to life after I die and I come back again and I'm reincarnated, where it says, Colleen, these are the things you need to know. <laughs> and find this book. Somehow it jumps off a shelf at a bookstore someplace and I go, oh, right, these are the things I learned last time so I don't have to take so long to learn them this, the next time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's this uh, one medium, maybe you've heard of her. Um, oh, gosh. Michelle White Dove, yes. her name just popped back into my head, and I've read a couple of books that uh, she has written. She's a really interesting person, and uh, she said that when we die and go to heaven, um, you were mentioning the life review, that one of the first things that we have to do when we get there is we have a life review, and she said that we're, uh, you're taking uh, it's kind of like you're taken into a room and you're expected to watch a movie of your life, all of the things that you did that were nice or not nice, and you'll be expected to experience, if you hurt other people, for example, if uh, you'll be expected to um, experience um, all the emotions and everything that they had to go through because of what you did and, and so forth. And um, well, that's just the first part, but it, it, then it gets better, you know. Yeah, and it is interesting with that perspective too because um, for humans, <laughs> which we all are, um, that just sounds like a punishment kind of thing to mm -hmm, us. Mm -hmm. But um, my understanding is you'll have that life review and you'll experience everything. You'll see it all, feel it all, mm -hmm. but it's not as painful as we would think it would be in the human body. Oh, um, oh, when uh -huh. we're on the other side, um, and we're in spirit form, we'll experience all of that, but we experience it in the capacity of having love all around us. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not that we're going to be punished, it's that we just need to learn, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And um, there's so much there, and it's, it's like a blink of an eye, apparently, uh -huh. how quickly it all comes through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we understand at such a higher level mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm my understanding, my belief system as of today, could change tomorrow. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting thing. So it's not so much a punishment as an awareness, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, another thing I remember her saying in one of her books was, uh, um, the devil and hell um, is a, is a fi fictitious story. Uh, Cause or you know created by uh, certain religious leaders in order to control the people that go to their churches. <laughs> oh, I you know I would agree with that. Um, I am not a. I don't believe in the devil and I don't believe in hell. I think that we create our own hell here mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. our decisions, choices, actions, beliefs. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can create that here. Uh, people will argue with me on that as well, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just, I, you know, it's just no, not worth it. I definitely, you know? I definitely agree with that, and I even thought about it quite a bit rec in, uh, recently when they were having all of those fires mm -hmm. in California, and a lot of people were dying in those, Can you imagine? In oh, those fires, you know. Uh, all I could think of was that's the closest we are, <laughs> a person can ever come oh. to hell is to go through something, something. like that. Something so. like that, you know, and I really felt awfully sorry for uh, all yeah. of those people when I heard about them. And we can't even, we really, in our view, our experiences, we can't even imagine what, what that was like for mm -hmm. them. It's just, mm -hmm. it's horrible, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... <laughs> you know, uh, I keep hearing, uh, most of what I hear about um, the state of California is about, has to do with problems, it seems, most of what you hear on the news. But I have this friend 
seriously, who thinks, who has lived in California off and on, and she just thinks California is the most wonderful place in the whole world to live, you know. And, and when I mention some of the bad stuff that happens there, she, go, she kind of poo-poos me, you know, like, oh, you know, it, you know, and she kind of tries to make it sound like, you know, it's not that big of a deal or there's well, not that much going on. It's really not as bad as what they're making it out in the news and everything. Yeah, but and that's a good perspective. <laughs> She's creating the she's creating the life experience she wants to have. Mm -hmm. So she's mm -hmm. creating a fun experience and thinks it's all great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the power so, of our choices. <laughs> well, it all depends on it has to do with where she's lived when she's been there and uh, you know at the time she's been there she's n never lived in any of those neighborhoods where all of this right. stuff was going on. So um, oh yeah, my sister lived in California for a while and. Um, it was way back when they had all the mudslides, and mm -hmm. then there were some fires, but not like now. Mm -hmm. And then somebody was murdered on her front lawn, and <laughs> so then she moved. <laughs> she moved to Vermont. Uh, <laughs> she went to Vermont. She went to Vermont. <laughs> but, you know, she loves to tell that story about, uh, yeah, well, I decided to leave there. You know, mm -hmm. she was in a suburb of Los Angeles. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I, you know, one thing I do want to make sure I talk about, because... Um, I compare life to a couple things. One is a labyrinth, but I also compare it to a, a lighthouse. Oh, a lighthouse? A lighthouse. And I got this last year when I was um, going up a lighthouse. I love lighthouses. I love to go up them and look out the windows and stuff because in a lighthouse, there's a couple things that happen. You know, you have to pay attention to each step as you're going. So mm -hmm. as you're handling your problems, you have to go day by day. Mm -hmm. You have to pay mm -hmm. attention. You've got to hold on to the railing. You can't just, you know, because if mm -hmm. you fall down those stairs at a lighthouse, you're going to get seriously hurt. So you've got to pay attention. You've got to stay focused on the present. You're going around and around, and you might think you're not getting anywhere. So when you have a problem, you might think you're not getting anywhere. But you're still going up. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then as you're going, every now and then you get a picture, a little window, and you see outside, but it's such a limited perspective. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at a problem, you see just a little piece of it. You're mm -hmm. not seeing the whole thing. And if mm -hmm. you don't know better, you might think that's the whole problem. Mm -hmm. But as long as you keep walking and you keep going, eventually you get to the top. Mm -hmm. And you get to look out and you get to see the whole picture. Mm -hmm. So when you have a problem, if you can remember that um, you're just seeing a small part of it. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing the whole thing. Because can't you look back at some of the problems you've had in your life and recognize, oh yes, because of that problem, I can see how I grew, I can see how I learned, I can see what I had to do, and I can see how it made me a better person. Mm -hmm. You know, you can start to see that and, you, and put it in a perspective. Because the story is so much bigger than we can humanly know sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And the thing about lighthouses too, you know, if they were to symbolize us, some lighthouses are very strong. <laughs> 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 they have big, gigantic, thick walls. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like we have that strength too. We just don't know it. Mm -hmm. So if we can compare ourselves to a lighthouse, <laughs> that we have that foundation, that strength, <laughs> And that if we just keep going, eventually we're going to see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of a fun little analogy there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. Um, so uh, what other things do you, do you have? have, have you, one you of my notes? favorites is called What If. What If, okay. And let me tell you why it is. Because when something happens, what's the first thing we do? Well, what if this happens, this happens, this happens. Like my identity being stolen. What if I could have gone into those what ifs? But what I do instead otherwise is to shift it to the other direction. Mm -hmm. And this started several years ago, many years ago, actually, when my daughter was probably five or six. I mm -hmm. was dropping her off at dance lessons. And it was a one-way road, so I was parked, of course, correctly. She got out of the car and started to run across the street, and a car came from the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. So she had looked the correct way, but she didn't look the other way because... It's a one-way road. So she knew people weren't supposed they to be weren't coming supposed to from be coming. the other way. And this car came from the wrong direction and literally stopped within five, six inches of her. The driver looked at me. I looked at her. My daughter's kind of like. And so over the next few days, I kept saying, what if she'd been hit by that car? What if she'd been hit by that car? And it, instead of it may, becoming a negative thing, it became a positive thing. Because I started to acknowledge to myself the blessings I had mm -hmm. that she was still here, she wasn't hurt, she wasn't <clears throat> dead, that <clears throat> all of this didn't happen. So I started to look at that almost hit as a blessing mm -hmm. because it opened my eyes up to, 
um, what I had. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like watching a movie. You know how they show everything is all normal. You're on a plane and everything's all normal. And da 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 chatting. And then there's a big plane crash. You know, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, you know yeah, yeah. you don't appreciate mm -hmm. the blessings of what you have. Mm -hmm. So I started using the what if the other way. And I walked into my house at Lilydale one day and <laughs> opened the door from my reading room into my living room to see a Niagara Falls <laughs> happening yes, back yes. there. My pipes had broken. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there was so much water. And doing my what if game came uh, solidified, became solidified after this. Because after the water hadn't been running for very long, maybe a day or two. You know, so it hadn't flooded the whole house, it wasn't frozen, that kind of thing. But because the water had been so strong, it knocked the ceiling down, mm -hmm. which we would all say is a bad thing, except <laughs> inside the ceiling was an extension cord plugged into an outlet up there. I don't know what this extension cord went to. I don't know why there was an outlet above the ceiling and it wasn't plugged in all the way. If the water hadn't knocked all that down, I might not have found that. And the house could have burned down mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. that extension cord that was plugged into something, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So it was a blessing in mm -hmm. disguise. Mm -hmm. So whenever something happens, mm -hmm. I always go, if it's bad, you know, I was uh, driving one time too and I came upon an accident that was, had just happened, you know, like one, two seconds before me. Uh, you know, basically I was right behind it. If I had left my house, two seconds earlier would I have been in that accident, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I used that what if to shift mm -hmm. my problems, mm -hmm. you know, my identity thing, applying for the car. What if I hadn't applied for that car um, loan and it had gotten worse? So this way I kind of look at it and go, oh, phew, good thing I found out now. Right. So I'm shifting right. my perspective right. and looking at things from a different angle. I've had a lot of clients tell me they love that one because <laughs> it's just a <laughs> reframing of things, mm -hmm. you know? So if you catch mm -hmm. yourself going the negative way, go the positive way mm -hmm. instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know that uh, I've had some near misses, like I almost got hit by a tornado once Ooh. while I was driving down the road. It went through right behind me just oh. as I finished driving yeah. there and things like that, you know? and. And it's pretty interesting, really, you know, that uh, <clears throat> you can have these near misses, you know. Um. In a way, it's kind of a course correction for us because mm -hmm. it gets us back on track to gratitude mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. recognizing the good we already have in our lives. And right, if right. people can be open to that idea, mm -hmm. I mean, Obviously, we're just throwing lots of ideas out there right now, but something might really grab somebody in particular where they think, oh, yeah, that makes sense to me, you know, try this. But so when something bad happens, if you make that conscious choice to shift the right, perspective, right. Oh, those little steps add up. They really do, yeah. And people don't realize. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I believe that you should experience gratitude every day. Sometimes... Um, Sometimes, you know, in unbusy moments, when I have enough time to think, uh, I'll just be thinking, um, you know, I'm so lucky to be who I am, you know, and, and know all the knowledge that I know. And, um, you know, I, I, and I love my life, you know, and, and, uh, and I'm not saying I'm rich, you know, because I'm not, but, um, uh, you know, it's just, uh, my life is just special the way, the way it is. You know, if you're a low-income person, but you've got, at least you've got everything you need, you know, you can feel grateful for that. I mean, I mean that's a type of wealth itself is just to have everything you need, like a roof over your head and enough food to eat and enough money to pay your bills, yeah. you know, um, just that is, is, can be considered wealthy, you know. Yeah, and it's, it's our experience of life that is what gives us meaning and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. It's not um, 
being wealthy, it's not our possessions, mm -hmm. all of that stuff, it's how we're experiencing it. So if we're having a fun life, mm -hmm. we're doing the best we can with it, that's a good life. Mm -hmm. And that's a life worth living. Yes, it is. You know? it, it really is. And to be able to have that gratitude and say, you know what, my life is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And so people just take that minute or two and just kind of go, you know what, this is pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> I usually catch myself in the act of thinking those thoughts at least once a day, you know. Uh, um, I love my life and uh, um, I'm just so lucky, you know, to be who I am and uh, be in relationship with uh, the main people in my life. Mm -hmm. and and that's, you know, it's a great mm -hmm. strategy to go through and uh, look for your gratitude, count your blessings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was driving back from the Erie Philharmonic rehearsal one night and I was just kind of in a weird mood and I wasn't particularly happy. And all of a sudden the song Count Your Blessings popped into my head and <laughs> I heard, well, that's interesting. And I thought, hmm. So I started literally counting my blessings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it only took a few minutes before I was in a totally different mood. Mm -hmm. And I tell my clients all the time, list them, write them down. You know, mm -hmm. the days you're feeling good, write it mm -hmm. down. So when you have a crappy day, mm -hmm. you can look at it and go, mm -hmm. oh, right, this is all good. Because when you're not mm -hmm. feeling good, sometimes it's hard to find them. So write them down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like um, one time I had this experience uh, where I was told that I had thyroid cancer. And, you know, of course, the doctor wanted to take it out and all of that. And uh, I felt kind of depressed and scared, you know, um, for about 24 hours. And then I called an herbalist on the phone, somebody that I was acquainted with, to talk to her about it. And she's going, oh, no, don't even consider what they're wanting to do. She's going. And I think we talked on the phone for over an hour, you know. And by the time I was through talking to her and she would told me all these things that I could do and everything, and uh, by the time I was getting off the phone, I noticed my uh, mood had completely changed over from the negative to the positive, and I'm going, yes. I, what she said is true, and it, 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 if I do it, it'll work. I can do this. I know I'm capable of doing this. And the problem over the course of a year, and I managed to maintain this positive attitude, and the thyroid problem went away, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, was, it, it was just so incredible, really. Um, that uh, I, I actually believed that I could do it, and, and it turned out okay. And uh, my thyroid gland has been healthy ever since. That was like 15 years That's ago. That's awesome. That's a perfect story of somebody reclaiming their power. Yes. You yes. needed to just reclaim your power. Yes. Once you get that back, then you, you can handle anything, even the stuff that's horrible. Mm -hmm. And what an mm -hmm. example. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty miraculous, really. But it, it just goes to show you, um, you know, I basically created my own situation. Instead of going through the horrible, nasty uh, surgery, and, which I've heard is very unpleasant and mm -hmm. losing my thyroid gland and having to depend on a drug to keep me alive for the rest of my life, you know, uh, um, it, it, was, it was really, really amazing. And, you know, every once in a while I have experiences that are actually that extraordinary. So yeah, that's that's awesome because it's it is that getting that power back. And when we're scared, when something happens, mm -hmm. our first reaction after the fear is to keep our power someplace else mm -hmm. and rely on doctors or rely on other mm -hmm. people rather mm -hmm. than touching in with ourselves to find out what is really true for us. I took responsibility for my own health at that moment mm -hmm. was what I did. Exactly. So. And it, it does take, like you said, it took you 24 hours, you know, and you had to talk to somebody, just kind of get another perspective, but that's fine. And it gets you back into being centered enough to hear what right, what is right for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, and if people remember that, that's like the most important thing too. Right, there's so many right, most important right. things. <laughs> so it's kind of like if you, you know, let other people get away with 
if you're believing what other people say they think you should do and then you do that, then you've given your power away oh, to yeah. um, <laughs> that other person. Oh, so. yes. I did a whole uh, blog radio show and on, on giving your power away, mm -hmm. you know, and it's easy to do. When we complain, when we whine, we're giving it away. When we let somebody else influence us, we're giving it away, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it's important to recognize that we have the power. Mm -hmm. We have, that should be a t-shirt. We have the power. <laughs> we have the power. <laughs> we have the power. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, we have the power to create the life we want to have. Right. We really right. do. And each one of us is different how we create it. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, in fact, uh, sometimes um, we can make the conscious decision whether uh, our life is going the way we'd always hoped it would we can make the conscious decision to be satisfied with the way it really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or mm -hmm. change it if we want to change it. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, sometimes people, and I can remember when I was younger feeling this way, uh, you know, feeling a certain amount of jealousy towards mm -hmm. other people because they had more money or they were prettier than me or, uh, or whatever, you know, or more talented than me, or, or whatever. Um, but uh, the thing to do is just to accept yourself. Yes. Uh, you're special the way you are, yes. you know. Uh, and, and one of the phrases people use all the time, too, is you're perfect the way you are. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always striving to make myself better, mm -hmm. but I've got to make sure I acknowledge who I am today, mm -hmm. that I'm doing the best I can. And if mm -hmm. people can truly say they're doing the best they can where they are mm -hmm. now, it's mm -hmm. all good. Mm -hmm. It's all good. <laughs> yes, yes it is. Uh, if they can just accept that. Like, you get these people, just for an example, maybe I shouldn't say it. But, um, <laughs> Change the details enough. <laughs> you know, they. you might be a man that wants to be a woman or, or, they, or a woman that would rather be a man and so they have these operations to change their physical uh, physicality you know and it's like um, why didn't you, you may, I find myself wondering why why couldn't they just accept themselves the way they yeah. were instead of well, putting themselves I through think all they, of this? I, it, my impression is they, their essence it doesn't fit their essence anymore. They, they have to be true to themselves and what their soul is telling them mm -hmm. is that they're in the wrong body, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, looking at like Chaz Bono, uh, when um, he transitioned, I, I thought that was just amazing to me that he was strong enough to do that. Really? Yeah, you know, to recognize that inside himself, he was in the wrong body. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's an interesting thing when we think about it, isn't it? Because there's, I mean, there's so many questions and, and things we could talk about related to that. Um, and I wonder sometimes if it's not part of God's plan to allow us to just look at each other for who they truly are at their soul level, mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than our physical bodies. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. on the other side, we're just souls. And mm -hmm. inside our physical body is the soul. So that mm -hmm. makes me wonder if it's part of God's plan. I don't know. It's a, I don't it's know. It's a theory. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's just a way I couldn't imagine feeling. Right. But, and, and that makes sense because that's not our path. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not, mm -hmm. I mean, we haven't had that issue, that concern. Um, you know, so that's part of it. Um, and that keeps us into making sure we're all open-minded enough to recognize who we are, who we can be. Mm -hmm. who we want to be, who mm -hmm. we are now, maybe we don't want to be that way anymore, or whatever it is, or who other people are and accept them for who they are, mm -hmm. no matter mm -hmm. who they are, mm -hmm. which can be a struggle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I just wondered what would make a per person feel yeah. that they had to make that. It's like a soul calling is what it feels like calling? to me, a soul you calling. So? Yeah, you know, so each of us has a different calling. Uh -huh. well, we could go into that for a while too, but each of us has a different calling. You know, my calling is to help people mm -hmm. handle their mm -hmm. lives, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe um, the people who are transitioning that way are their calling is to show other people 
how important it is to live true to themselves, oh. no matter mm -hmm. what. So mm -hmm. they're showing other people how to do mm -hmm. it. And it can be hard for us because we've all grown up, many of us, if not all mm -hmm. of us, have grown up in different kinds of religions oh, where yeah. there's so yeah. much judgment, so many rules and all of that. And we've also grown up in society where we do judge each other, we do question, we do yeah. wonder yeah. what's true, and we try to meet societal norms sometimes, which is mm -hmm. back to suppressing ourselves mm -hmm. and not expressing our own power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, it's an amazing little circle, isn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes it is. Well, we're down to three minutes. Was there any other subjects you wanted Anything to touch on? Anything that would be fun. I would touch think, on. you know, well, three minutes. The, one of the biggest things I do is paint what you see. Paint what paint you Paint what see. you see. I'm taking art lessons, watercolor painting lessons. Hmm. And she tells us to paint what you really see. We have these assumptions and stereotypes that the sky is blue, the grass is green, the trees are green. Mm -hmm. But they're not. If you actually look at the sky, sometimes mm -hmm. it's pink, sometimes it's orange. You know, sometimes the trees are brown, sometimes they're black. You know, sometimes yeah. they're pink and red and blue and yellow and all these different colors. You just never know. And mm -hmm. so sometimes when we have a problem, we don't look at the facts. We mm -hmm. go to the crazy brain again. So if mm -hmm. people can just stick to what they're really seeing, what they're really experiencing, mm -hmm. that will get them out of mm -hmm. some of the emotional attachments that they have to their problems. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. an easy one to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, and uh, um, <laughs> do you have anything else? Anything, anything else? Well, you know, if, if anybody, if the biggest lessons uh -huh. are basically Become aware. Become aware. Become aware. Pay attention to your words. Your, with words in your head, the words that come out of your mouth. <laughs> Pay attention to what's happening because your words are creating your energy. The words are creating your life. Make conscious choices in how you're responding and reacting to your words as well as to your life problems. Make sure you look at stuff with the facts. Don't get stuck in mm -hmm. the mind. Um, you have the power to control your mind. You have the power mm -hmm. to control how you're experiencing mm -hmm. life. And then the last thing would just be, no, you have the power. You have the power yes. to live the life the way you want to live it. Mm -hmm. And it is possible. Now, people can go to my website, psychicmediumcolleen.com is the quick link, or colleenvanderzyden.com if they're brave and want to spell it out. Um, and there's all sorts of information on there about living your life to your best, mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. my goal in life here, mm -hmm. is to help you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Well... You know, as usual, it's been a lot of fun visiting with you. Um, and uh, I wanted to say thank you for uh, coming on. And um, I will see the rest of you in the viewing audience in a couple of weeks on the next episode. <laughs>